What's going on YouTube family? Byerly Studios here with another how-to video. In this video, you're gonna see me create a custom order for a customer off of Etsy. They gave me some description about what they want. They want a black 30 ounce curved tumbler with an epoxy or ectoplasmic ooze from the top. And they all want it all around a ghost theme. They gave me a ballpark of what they have in mind. And of course, I'm gonna take it and we're gonna put it on some steroids and we're gonna create something absolutely incredible for this customer. Uh, we're gonna do some sculpty work. We're gonna put some ribs on it, similar to the barrel style that we have right here. Um, any of the radioactive, the poison, the toxic, and the infectious substance cups that I make on my Etsy shop. We're gonna make something truly amazing. Stick with me through this process. It's gonna take about 45 minutes if you watch it beginning to end. It took me around two weeks to create this order. Uh, it was an absolute blast to make, and I appreciate the customer for coming back to me as a return customer on my Etsy shop at Byerly Studios. Let's get to it, and then let's uh, show you what an amazing item we've created. Everyone, so I'm gonna start this tumbler off with some sculpt work. Uh, so I'm just going to use some uh, sculpting clay to sculpt the eye uh, and then uh, add some uh, extra clay around the top and the bottom to create the eyelids uh, as well as a brow just to give it some definition. A lot of these details will be hidden when I apply uh, other uh, portions to the tumbler here in just a bit, but I'm just going to give it some definition uh, and then I'm going to go in and add some peeled back metal effect so that the ghost looks like he's breaking out of the tumbler. So the eye was a little bit too large, so I shaved some of that clay down and I'm just gonna re-smooth it uh, and apply some wrinkles along the eyelids. All right, so the next step is to apply that peeled back metal effect. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna create like a ridged effect so that the, the lip of the metal just looks like it's been peeled back or like he's, he's breaking free uh, and rippling the metal, the, the sheet metal of the canister away from him, trying to get out. Uh, I wanted to have a V formation so that when I apply epoxy to this, it will just naturally um, gravitate towards the bottom of the cup and drip down and you'll see that later on as I, as I try to create that effect next is to apply some uh, fingers to it I didn't want to do a full hand I wanted to keep it kind of simple so one or two maybe three fingers at the most and I'm just gonna quickly just sculpt these out uh, and then once I get them on the tumbler I'll apply a little bit of detail to them a lot of the detail will kind of be worked out of it as I apply uh, some of the acrylic paints, depending on how, how thick I apply those to get the dimension that I want. So this part of the tumbler build was probably my favorite, adding the fingers uh, so that it looks like he's actually prying his way out. Um, I wanted to leave a lot of this kind of open to interpretation so that the viewer can kind of imagine how the face is looking as it comes out. Uh, so I'm just adding a little bit of, uh, of details to the finger joints just for, you know, for depth. And then I'm going to apply some more peeled metal towards the top to give it um, a little bit of more dimension towards the lip of the tumbler. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and apply some rust texture around some ribs that I had applied. Um, before I did a base coat of black. I did not spray paint black over the uh, the ghost though. I just don't want that thick paint layered on there. Uh, it, it would take away too much of the, uh, the little lines and details that I had, I had uh, scribed into the, the clay. So I'm just using some uh, PVA glue or Mod Podge to apply some black glitter to this. You can use sand or any kind of gritty material that you want. You can also build up the layers with, uh, with paint itself if you wanted to. I like this just because it gives something to my, for my acrylics and washes to, to really grip onto really quickly. Um, and it also makes me apply extra layers. Uh, if I don't apply enough layers, that, that silver or the, the glitter black will show through. And it's okay to have a little bit of that in some areas, 
but it, it makes you apply enough paint in to create the depth that you need to get a really a good rust effect as well as um, some dirt and grime so I'm just gonna give it a very vigorous brush off with a fan brush to get all of that excess glitter off uh, you can really be rough with this if you lose quite a bit of this this material glitter wise it really does not matter at all this is just to get you uh, an idea where the the rust needs to be so that you can add the layers everything that you add will hide any imperfections or mistakes or scratches everything will be hidden all right so this is another fun part so i have uh these these clay rivets that i had created for a, another project i created a lot of them and i didn't need them all so i'm going to use them here so these are designed to look like little cast iron rivets and uh, so i sculpted these with clay baked them and I put them in a little Ziploc baggie and all I'm using is E6000 to apply these around the top um, band metal band and the bottom metal band so I'm just giving a little dab of E6000 uh, adhesive to the bottom of each rivet uh, and then I'll just smush it down and let that excess kind of uh, squeeze out of the sides uh, I want to do this, um, and I don't have to be so detailed about it, is because I want to paint that glue, um, all those clear, a uh, silver tone so that it looks like some of the rivets have been half welded or kind of rust is like peeking out from underneath the rivets. They really, really come to life when I start to apply some paints to those. So next I'm going to go ahead and apply an acrylic black base coat to those rivets and I'll let that dry while I go ahead and start on the rust. Alright so next this portion takes a while so I'm applying some acrylics to uh, get the layer of grime and dirt and rust effect. I'm just using a combination of uh, washed browns. Uh, silver paint things like that to to get the depth that I want um, the cast iron rivets will have a wash of browns then silver uh, and then I'll come back to a light brown uh, and all that mixed in with washes will, will fill in those little dimples that make it look like cast iron rivets like somebody hammered those in Now the paint that I applied to the actual barrel itself is a wash, like a brown wash, a lot of water involved, uh, and that's just to give it a, a nice brown film so it's not so glossy. I don't want any gloss on it unless it's around one of the, uh, the metal, metallic bands, and even those will have a highlight of silver. So you can see the layers really do start to build up. And I do just jump around as the paint dries. I'll, I'll twirl it if I see there's somewhere that I want to add more paint to or add more definition to. Add a little brown here, a little sil silver there. Uh, and you can do that until you really get the desired effect.
All right, so now I'm gonna take some silver paint and I'm gonna go around the E6000 adhesive that's squeezed out from underneath the rivets. I'm gonna just very crudely paint that silver and then after that completely dries, I'll come by with a little bit of a light brown wash just to give it a tinge of brown to match the rest. And that just gives another effect that it had been welded or, or uh, it's kind of merged with the metal below it. It's supposed to be a sealed container after all. All right, so here's when the tumbler really starts to come to life. I'm going to begin uh, the breakaway part of the tumbler by creating a black base layer that I will build colors on top of. So I'm just going to cover all of the outer edges underneath the lip uh, and underneath of the fingers with black paint. I'm also going to give that little piece of metal that I have pulled over over the finger uh, a base coat black as well because the uh, spray paint didn't hit that. So I'm going to give that a black base coat completely and then I'll add a little bit of silver and rust to it just to give it some dimension along with the other, other portions of the metal. So here it is. I'm going over those rivets, the silver rivets with some uh, uh, brown wash and just creating a little bit of a drip effect. Some of these drip effects in brown, I go over later with some uh, green glow in the dark paint. So some of it's for not, but it gives it just a base of, for me to add that later on. So I went ahead and uh, took a break and did the bottom of the tumbler. I just did the same layered effect that I did for the other sides. Uh, silvers and browns and a little bit of uh, some brown wash to, to dull out that glossy black spray paint. Uh, I didn't plan on doing a whole lot with the bottom of the cup other than my artist signature. Uh, so I went ahead and just uh, gave it some layers uh, and then that's all there is to the bottom. So now that uh, I'm done with the bottom of the tumbler, I'm going to jump back over to the ghost and the portions that I had not yet painted, uh, I'm going to go over with a light black wash. This kind of gives me an idea where those uh, that wash is going to settle into the grooves that I have carved into the, uh, the clay uh, and it gives me an idea of how I want to do the shading on the fingers and around the eye. All right, so then once the black base layer is done, uh, so I'm gonna use glow-in-the-dark uh, folk art paint uh, and sap green to start creating the green ooze base layer. So I'm just gonna kinda give an idea where I want my drips to be. I want them to have a little bit of a glow to them, but due to the fact that the glow-in-the-dark paint is so light, 
I don't want it to be that light. I would like it to have a little bit of um, a dark shade to it. So although it will have a glow in the dark uh, shade to it and it may hold some light when the lights are turned off and it's fully charged. Uh, for the most part, I just want a, a richness of color over glow in the dark. Uh, so most of my, my greens are kind of mixed between the two colors, sap green and glow in the dark. Um, so kind of a little bit of a best of both worlds. So I'm just getting a green base layer over where I kind of want the, uh, the, the green you know, background of the ectoplasm to be. So that way I can build up a little bit of color and definition for the epoxy to go over later. So this was a returning customer back to my Etsy page. They had made a previous purchase before and then they requested this tumbler. Um, I gave them all sorts of options and, and things like that. I asked them if they wanted uh, a green skin or a flesh tone uh, look to the uh, ghost and they chose green, uh, more of a traditional um, Ghostbusters uh, uh, ooze, ooze ectoplasm type of look. Uh, so I went ahead and gave it a shade of green, and I'm going to do the same thing for the fingers. And then I'm just going to build up some browns, um, a little bit of a black and dark brown wash, uh, as well as some uh, phthalo green to bring in a little bit of a bluish tint uh, to shade different areas of, of the ghost. So here I am using that dark brown wash to bring forward some of those uh, little details that I had carved into the clay. Uh, I'll just apply that and then let that go down into the grooves that I had carved uh, and wipe any excess off. And that just brings the, brings the details of those highlights forward a little bit in your mind when you look at the sculpture piece. Here in just a moment I'll do the other finger and you can really see how it, it brings the details to life.
Okay, so this was the only real tough decision when I was making this tumbler. Uh, I wanted to make just a black eye, but at the same time, I really like putting detail into things that I make. Uh, I'm glad that I made the eye black as I did now. When I apply other epoxy layers and things, it really does shine. Um, I don't want the eye to draw too much of the eye. I actually want the fingers to draw the eye and then naturally it would, it would it would kind of pull your eyes into the hole where the metal is. That's what I want. I don't want your eyes to go straight to the eye. And I feel like if I hand painted a pupil or, or a slit or something like that in there, um, it would make it look too much like a like a like a like a zombie or like a, a demon or something like that. I don't want that. Uh, so I just went with a standard black eye, uh, and then I'm gonna apply some light highlights and then go over it a little bit more with some dark details, uh, and then this portion of the tumbler will, will be almost complete. Alright, so next I'm going to go ahead and begin layering on some glow-in-the-dark paint. I'm using Folk Art Glow-in-the-Dark Crafting Paint here. Uh, you can get it from Walmart, Michaels, any of those crafting stores. Uh, it comes out very thick, even after you give it a good shake in the bottle. Um, I like being able to, to kind of put it on the sides of the fingers or uh, gloop it into the corners of where the metal is making contact with the ectoplasm. And it covers all of those bases. So I'm just going to slowly kind of layer that in, um, apply more highlights as I go. Uh, and then when I pour the uh, epoxy ectoplasm over it, any of these under underlying shadows and uh, glow-in-the-dark paints, I hope that they'll shine through a little bit. Um, that way the ectoplasm isn't too dark. Uh, so I'm just applying some, uh, some of this paint here to give it some thickness because when it dries it tends to dry kind of like a, a flat color like a flat dark green and I want to try to let it hold some of its brightness so I'm just gonna layer these in and I'll do this around the entire tumbler to all of the drips and the, the leaks uh, around the entire thing alright so I'll be the first to own up to a mistake Normally for most of my radioactive, uh, my poison and toxic barrels that I make from my Etsy shop, I will put the vinyl hazard uh, decals on the top and the bottom first and then I'll do rust and dirt effects. I forgot to do that here. I completely forgot he wanted um, these, these uh, hazard logos across the top and the bottom. I kind of had a dilemma on where I wanted to put them, and because I had already applied the rust, the vinyl really did not want to attach to the tumbler. Uh, the vinyl wants a smooth surface, so it took me extra time to get this to stick. Um, and then when I went over it with uh, acrylic washes to kind of dirty them and grungy them up a little bit, make them look like they've been on the tumbler for the entirety of the rust being accumulated over time, uh, it, it took a while to get it to stick and to to be to where I, I didn't have to worry about them peeling off the finished effect is absolutely amazing but it just took extra work so you'll see me just around the top here in just a moment I have to actually physically apply them one at a time at some points and that's just wasted time the effect is great but I feel like I could have done this a little bit faster if I had done it a different way So here you'll see me using Folk Art Glow in the Dark Crafting Paint. This is uh, the white uh, Glow in the Dark paint. 
it holds uh, the glow a lot better than the greens or the, the colored versions of it. Uh, so what my goal is on the leaks specifically is to apply a bunch of this, the white glow on the dart to apply the layers of green over it so that hopefully it has more color retention when uh, the lights go out. Here I am applying those those decals one at a time and of course that that piece of metal around the lip is supposed to be kind of rippled and torn so I cut one in half to go against the edge of the metal. I have to really push hard to get that to stick and then I dimpled it so that the brown wash will kind of uh, kind of settle into those dimples 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 <laughs> where uh, the, the the rust is. Alright, so next stage and one of the last on this process uh, of painting the ghost and the exterior of the barrel is to just keep layering on the green glow-in-the-dark uh, paint. Uh, I want it to be really thick and vibrant uh, and it's bringing those tones up quite a bit. Uh, so I'm just going to go around all of the active plasm um, drip spots where there's supposed to be depth and where all of the ooze would be coming out from around the ghost trying to break free and uh, just keep applying layers. All right, so we're all done with this portion of the build. We've got the clay work done, sculpting and baking. We've got the ribs and the bands and the cast iron rivets applied to the tumbler, all the rust and dirt uh, paint uh, applied, as well as the vinyl uh, hazard banding. Uh, so at this point, my customer had uh, specifically requested some stenciling done, uh, paranormal investigator uh, investigation and eliminators. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stencil that on in some green paint uh, and then I'll just go ahead and remove that and now after consulting with the customer I just we decided that this isn't really a great color um, and here's why so I did the same stenciling with the different wording on the bottom of the tumbler handle with extreme caution um, and this turned out awesome so we decided that yellow is a lot better so I hand painted over the existing green stencil um, with uh, with yellow instead. Uh, this is a uh, folk art, uh, I believe, sunshine yellow, I believe. Uh, so I'm just going to go over it real quick with some yellow paint. All right, so another fun part of the build is epoxy work. Now, because I have the ghost breaking out and then the customer also wants a drip from the lip down around the top of the tumbler I'm gonna do this in two different sections um, so I started off by mixing up uh, about 20 milliliters of epoxy um, and then I didn't feel like I had enough glow in the dark paint in there so I went back and add a little bit more and then I'm just gonna use a popsicle stick to gently just drip where I want the ectoplasm to come from now this is kind of a, an apply it and then babysit it type of thing otherwise it can kind of drip out of control now because I layered the fingers onto the tumbler over the metal it does have a gap between the the second knuckle and the actual tumbler itself below it so I'll pick up the tumbler and then angle it upward so that that epoxy runs underneath those fingers 
So there I'm just going to kind of go and use my popsicle stick to kind of drip it out of the edges. Uh, in hindsight, I didn't really need to do this. It would have done that eventually anyways. I ended up having to go back with a paper towel and kind of clean up the, uh, the edges because it wants to run down the sides of the tumbler. Um, it's okay. It just took a little bit of a babysitting to make sure that the epoxy kind of sat where I wanted it to. But the final effect after this is absolutely incredible. All right, so here is another layer of epoxy. This one has sap green in the mixture to bring up the green a little bit. Uh, I apply this around with a popsicle stick and just let it drip down naturally over the cast iron rivets and around the edges of the uh, around the ribs of the tumbler. Now here I make a mistake. Sometimes I will put the tumbler on its head so that the epoxy uh, drip will slow so I have time to work. I let it sit too long and it, I knocked it over and epoxy went everywhere. I'm sorry, ectoplasm went everywhere. And I'm telling you, ectoplasm is some messy stuff. So here's kind of a finished effect and now we're going to go ahead and uh, after this is fully cured we're going to add our epoxy layer. This is a 20 milliliter flood coat and I'm going to go ahead and make sure it gets in all the grooves and all of the uh, little little uh, rust spots, make sure there's nothing that's pulling or, uh, or not covered. Um, now this is just a flood coat so it's not the final coat so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. A few air bubbles here and there won't matter. Uh, but I'm just going to make sure everything gets a good coat, even the epoxy at the top, around all the little drips. Make sure all of the vinyl is covered, as well as the bottom of the tumbler. And then what I will do is uh, I'm going to stop the turner, because I haven't used all my epoxy yet. And I'm going to make sure that all of the nooks and crannies around those fingers and on that eye are completely covered. All right, so after the flood coat, I hit it with a heat gun real quick to pop any of those little bubbles. Uh, and then I'm going to let it fully cure for around 12 to 24 hours until it's a nice smooth glass surface. My customer orders some water decals, so I'm going to go ahead and put those on. I'm not going to include that in this video because each customer is different. They may want different uh, uh, water decals or things like that. All right, so here's a glamour shot of what the fresh epoxy looks like on the tumbler. Uh, it is absolutely amazing, and I so appreciate the customer giving me this idea of a ghost tumbler. And I know that I kind of ran with it and took it to an extreme uh, with all the sculpt work and stuff, but it was a blast to build, and I hope they love it. All right, everybody, so that's all there is to this video. We made a custom order for this customer. I know he's absolutely gonna love it for his brother. It is a gift from, from him to another person. So they'll be able to look in and see the process that it took to create this custom order for them. I've already listed this on my Etsy shop. I'll offer it with the ghost, which is a higher price point just because it takes longer to create the sculpting and the painting and stuff. But I'll also offer it with just the barrel, which is more so a reasonably priced uh, along with the other barrel tumblers that I make. So do check that out. Please uh, favorite our shop on Etsy. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. I really want to push in YouTube as far as as uh, as our presence on that, that platform compared to some of the others like TikTok and Instagram. I'm on those. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy posting things on there. But it's a, it's a lot funner to create long video content for you, it's also enjoyable for me to make that. It keeps track of some of the projects that I've made, the methods and procedures that I've used, and I look forward to creating more and bigger and better content, not only just YouTube, uh, Tumblr videos and how-tos, but uh, I wanna get into all sorts of art for you guys. And in, in the process, I enjoy that as well. So I appreciate you watching this video. It turned out absolutely amazing. Uh, please like, subscribe, and come back for more later. Thanks very much, guys.